Testing, one, two, three, let's hope I am not muffled, tee hee. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night. It is I, Westy, streaming to you through the power of the internet on a dying platform, standing on the shoulders of giants, dwindling in respect as a brand, and diminishing in quality of assurance. Well, today, tonight, I want to talk about a little company I've been working for in a series of videos I will be releasing maybe every week, maybe every other week. I'm a busy guy, as you know, living out of side of seedy hotels because I don't have my living situation set up yet, yet to receive a call back. Life of the nomad, life of the homeless, life of the dissident. More on that at another point. But, let's not get sidetracked. This is a video about me working for the multi-billion dollar industry. Working for one of the figureheads of a new technocratic age in society. Once I have my resources in front of me, I will be releasing a detailed video about this company, about uh, many other companies like it. Working for the man, being a wage slave at none other than Amazon LLC. Now, I am directly not affiliated with corporate offices or um, any kind of office job with Amazon. I work at the what they call the fulfillment center, and my job consists of a lot of physical activity. It's a good job for very for various types of people, maybe people that just want um, some quick cash during the summer, maybe they want a seasonal type of deal during the holidays. Maybe they're just uh, down on their luck and have no experience and have no nothing worth working at a uh, private owned business. Something someone should be doing if they want to start out. Work at a private owned business. Don't work for faceless corporations with multiple shareholders that you know very little about that distribute their wealth to themselves, do nothing and offer the return of the people who support that platform. Now, Amazon, I'll give a synopsis on it once I have my resources, like I said. It started out Jeff Bezos being the founder, the CEO, creating this website as a simple online bookstore back in 1994, 1996. Working its way up from electronic devices, selling books, uh, you know, furniture, to what we know today. The AI developing god of a company that will very soon push forth its agenda in world domination. Anyway, back on topic. I like to get sidetracked about these kind of ideas. Anyway, back on topic, this job is for people who genuinely are, maybe they're not credit worthy, maybe they have nothing but the clothes on their back. This is a good kind of job to start out with, to an extent. And what I mean by this is, the clientele, of the, the hours, the unassured, scheduled, and the very, the, the kerfuffle involving what you, your, what you need, what kind of schedule you need to be tailored towards. So, sorry if I keep doing this, my allergies are acting up pretty badly tonight. So this company, huge as it is, no real attachment to the fulfillment associates, as they're called, in this company. Um, 
you start off applying online. Now when you apply to become a fulfillment associate online, it's kind of a dice roll, to say the least. You, you really have no human connection, human, there's no face-to-face -face interview. It's more of a congregation. That's if you correctly completed your hiring orientation. Now, I'm going to tell you why this is such a bogus kind of business that'll take pretty much anybody. You know, maybe Hakmud with his 12 uh, nieces and nephews hiding in his cupboards back at his house to uh, Jerry, your local, uh, your local sex offender. <laughs> Just to give an example, a, a prime example, but yeah, the kind of orientation you start off with, you apply online. You don't do any kind of questionnaire type thing. It's very short for the most part. You give your information out. And you go to the higher orientation. Which is not at the building you're going to be working at. It's actually going to be held in a fucking uh, Hilton Inn. Or some kind of hotel. Where they can get all the worker drones ready. Sit them down and tell them, oh, you're going to be really fulfilled at this job. You're going to have so much fun. You're going to work hard. Have fun. That's their motto they use in my building. And uh, with these high, higher orientations, there's no clear... Uh, it doesn't prepare you for the kind of work ahead. It instead blindly gives people assumptions, uh, false expectations, and a false sense of security for the most part. So after you do a higher orientation at a hotel where they show you a presentation of what kind of work you're going to be doing, you're going to take a drug test, spit in the tube, they put it in an envelope, mail it off to somebody, bada bing, bada boom, show up to the facility you're supposed to be at, where it, the higher orientation should be, and you'll officially get your badge by then if you've taken the right steps and you've done the online bits, which are the majority of how you will be accepted into this kind of job. If you're not very well-versed in tech, if you don't know the internet very well, Godspeed. There's people there to help you, but for the most part, it's not like a traditional type of hiring or orde ordeal. So with that out of the way, you get your badge, you go to your facility, you clock in, you get through these turnstiles that are quite the fire hazard, even if they are unlocked when during a fire hazard. It ain't pretty safe. And, um... Uh, you're supposed to have a security screening, from what I hear. Not in my building. They're just like, hey, what's up? I'm like, hey. So, you go downstairs to the factory floor to where you start your job as a fulfillment associate. What do you do as a fulfillment associate? You scan crap. And that's all you do until you ask for another position or... They deem you worthy of doing something better with your time. But for the most part, you're going to start off, depending on the building, depending on what kind of work, wearing a vest, a pink vest is what my building started off with, training vests. And you're going to be scanning packages to pallets, postal pallets. You're going to build these pallets very precisely. It's such a precise job. You one. One screw-up can compromise the stability of the pallet. And it's very important to have a stable pallet so the customer can be satisfied. And the trucks can pick these up, send them to the post offices. People can get them on time. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Grandma gets a new set of uh, uh, 
silk lingeries in her stocking this year. All thanks to you. You're the you're the man to deliver those packages. We're not delivering them. We're scanning them. We're putting them on pallets. Now, there's positions where you get to work up from there. I know, it gets exciting. You get to be a... What do they call it? There's, ver there's varying positions. Not many with authority. That's something you have to be here for a while. You have to be here for at least one year to collect your work benefits. Your... Um, to qualify for another position, a higher up position. And these higher up positions, they get more hours and they do a lot less work. That's the thing. That's fair enough. Very fair enough. What isn't fair enough is the treatment of the clientele if, say, someone had a bad day. Where am I going with this? Let me get back on track. That's for another time. So, after you completed maybe your first step and maybe you asked for, hey, you know, can I get training in this department so I don't have to keep scanning shit to a fucking pallet? Uh, yes, sir. You can be a water spider. The hell's that? They're the guys that have big plastic poles and they wrap the pallets up. And they scan the labels from the packages. Two labels. They scan two labels from two packages on the pallets after they've reached a certain height. You scan that to a portable printer and it spews out two more labels that you stick onto the pallets after they've been wrapped up in cling wrap. You bring them to a staging area for then to someone to stage these pallets. And what does that mean? They bring these pallets to a staging area. Namely these, they're called pods. And these are the pods where the trucks arrive and they collect these pallets. Exciting so far, yes? So. When you have a redundant schedule like this you can kind of fly off the wall at some of the outlandish tactics used to make sure people stay in their place they don't get too ambitious I'm not going to try to be too archaic when I say that because let's just say the people who hold the power aren't the people that should hold the power when it comes to these kind of jobs. For the most part. You might be working alongside. Some pretty okay people. Like I said. There may be some un undesirables. But all in all. It's a job. It's a very physical job. Despite. Uh, what some might believe. And But it's not very worth it. This is the whole point. I'm trying to get across. It's not worth it. It's a job I have chosen to at least have one year of experience here so I can move on, collect my paycheck at the end of the day, clock in, clock out, bada bing, bada boom, move on to greater things. That's the plan, right? Wrong. This, this is the kind of job, is a dead end job. If you want to move up, you're still moving up to a position that only gets... Maybe 35 grand a year. Yeah, try living off of that, man. You can't. You just can't. So, we established that there's the scanners, there's the water spiders, then there's the process assistants. Those are the managers of the factory floor. They're the people that get more hours, that have less work to do, mainly just tell people what to do, Sometimes they're dickheads. Sometimes they're pretty cool. Um, but for the most part, they control the whole organization of the factory. They're the people that are quick. They 
have to be reliable, they have to be assertive when it comes to getting these pallets in the trucks on time and tracking pallets and tracking trucks, delivery times, the whole nine yards. That's also the job of the logistics center. You can apply to be a part of logistics, which they have to do nothing at all. They could sit in a little corner, smoke their reefer, kick up their feet, look at an iPad, see what trucks are coming here, which ones are going out. And that's just the whole basis of the positions. There's also HR, the help desk. And there's also learning ambassadors that teach the new employees the ins and outs of the factory. So this kind of job, like I said, very physical. It, there is leniency when it comes to voicing what kind of job you want to do. Now, I took up this job for the simple fact, the very simple fact, I wanted training in forklifts. Uh, I think I wanted to start a maybe some kind of brief inter introduction into uh, I, I wanted the forklift training to get into the construction field long story short it's something I, ha I haven't fully fleshed out yet but that was one of the main reasons I took the job but what kind of forklifts are these uh, the kind that you're not really allowed to drive the kind that you have to hassle the process assistants over and the learning ambassadors to teach you how to use. You have to be on people's ass every day and ask them, can I do this kind of work now? Can I do this kind of work now? Oh, remember me? I'm this guy that wanted to do this kind of work. And they say, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a big waiting list though. And, I don't know, man, I don't, I don't really think I should put you on that waiting list. Well, why not? I don't know, man, there's something about you. So, eventually, if you get past all that crap, if they deem you worthy of training of something so menial, you get the opportunity to do whatever kind of work you wanted to do in this facility. Now, this facility operates... Not very like the other facilities from around this state. I, I know very little. This is another point. This is one of my main points I'm trying to get across here. And I, I'm trying to make it seem like I'm not ranting. But it's a company with very little direction. Very little... Um, outwardness into what someone should be doing or how things should be done and what the hell is going on so this is a kind of job where like i said you're low income you're down on your luck go for it get something with you know it'll give you some kind of experience back on topic now once you get the kind of training you ask for in a certain job, at this job, um, you're going to be disappointed, like I was, when I got the forklift training. What this training entailed was just to operate simple electric forklifts, stand-up forklifts, and a glorified pallet jack that, um, it's only, it's, it's building specific. It's not something... You, you can put it on your resume, but if that company doesn't have that kind of equipment, what good is it to them, you know? So, I got trained in how to operate a stand-up forklift in this uh, motorized pallet jack. And it's not, an industri it's not industrial grade equipment. It's something that has a 2,500 pound threshold. There's a whole course you have to take, about four hours long, and then you have to have a evaluation in the field or on the factory floor on how you operate. So I did that. I got this 
license, if you can call it that. Basically just a card. Only for this building. It's not something everlasting, you know? It's something that expires in two years. And it's not something really worth putting on a resume. So, ultimately, you're getting involved in a job. You could be a manager, give or take, in half a year if you're really hassling people and you're assertive in what you want. This is kind of the problem I was dealing with. But if it if it's something you want, um, ba base level, basic level uh, training in, you're better off do going to a private business, going into a, some kind of trade, maybe kickstarting your own business. I would steer clear of Amazon as a. If you want to transfer to this kind of job. If you're already in a good established position. Don't don't work for Amazon dude. Don't do it. But if you want to sc uh, scrape up some cash for the summer. For the winter. For the holiday seasons. Go for Amazon. If you want to be tortured. <laughs> if you want to live in hell. So. For the most part, it's not a very fleshed out video, I know that. It's off the cuff. Mostly just um, emphasizing my frustration with how this business operates, with how this facility operates. Uh, a lot of weird tactics. Everything's automated. You're a number, not an employee. You, if you want medical time off, you have to apply online. You have to call this number to somebody who doesn't speak English. Or English isn't their first language. Because we have to be tailored to the new society, the new people, the new arrivals. If you can pick up what I'm putting down. All a part of a globalized type of business that's being pushed onto America, that's being pushed into every other country. Jeff Bezos, the multi-trillion dollar man, has done it. He set forth a path, he made a goal, he's striding to see it through. Huh. Yes, indeed. Take this job if you want to be tormented. Take this job if you want cash that's really not worth it. For four hours, a, four hours a day. You can't go over 30 hours in my facility. You get four hours a day, 25 hours a week. Now, for someone to work that full-time, they have to have a lot of heart. They have to have thick skin. They have to put up with a lot of bullshit. Okay. So this is episode one. Basically just giving a synopsis of how my facility operates. It's very, uh, yeah, it's very drone-like when it comes to how employees are treated. More like numbers. Maybe in the next episode I'll give you a reenactment of some of the crazy characters you can come across it working at a place like this. For the most part, I made every point I wanted to make. I haven't fully fleshed this out. This was off the cuff. So, until next time, I'm Westy. 
You can catch me on YouTube whenever. You can hit subscribe if you want to see more. Because I will be bringing Tales from Amazon every week. Possibly. Until next time, folks. I'm signing off.